We are here today at the project site of North Shore at Mandalay, which is at the corner of Fifth Street and Harbor Boulevard. And it is formerly the site of JNJ Oil Disposal Company. And uh, it became a toxic waste site and is now scheduled for residential development. JNJ Oil Company operated a waste disposal site here that became classified as a toxic waste site that was closed down in 1981. Today we have supervisor and former coastal commissioner John Flynn. Welcome to the program John. Thank you. You were uh, a Ventura County supervisor from the year 1972? That's right, 72. And you served how long? 32 years. Uh, you were also on the Coastal Commission uh, during its uh, early years? Coastal Commission uh, appointed by Governor Jerry Brown a long time ago. Not the Jerry Brown today, the Jerry Brown a long time ago, 1981, and I served until about 83. That's great. And uh, the site we're uh, at today was uh, uh, within the county jurisdiction yes. when you became supervisor. That's correct. Uh, it had. Uh, a company called J and J, and uh, there was another company. There was another company some time ago. I can't remember the name of it. I think it was Connor or something, a name similar to that. And uh, they turned over the operation of their portion. It was about 35 acres to J and J or John T. Amar. This is name, the operator, the final operator. So both companies were in the uh, waste disposal business. That's correct. Yes. And uh, so you, you got to see what they were actually doing down here. Well, I got to see it. I, I used to observe uh, trucks dumping uh, waste right behind me here. Uh, big trucks would come in and dump waste. And then the people from Oxnard Shores, which is right over here, in the uh, mobile home camp or park, uh, called me and said, we got a you know, we'd like you to help us close this down. The, one of the main leaders was a guy by the name of Bob Coulier. I wanted to mention his name because he was so persistent. He passed away some time ago, but he helped me a great deal in getting it closed. But there wasn't really much support for closing it. It was owned by the McGrath family, the site itself. They finally sold it in 1985. Uh, and it's a prominent family, well-liked family. But the site uh, simply uh, wasn't something you would have here at the beach area, dumping oil waste, maybe other chemicals too. You said before that uh, fellow supervisors were not supportive of closing the site, but you still managed to uh, affect their operation. How did you do that? Well, I think uh, uh, it came to a hearing at the board in 1981 and I had not been on the board for too much into that term, but had worked hard with the county staff, and uh, they put a lot of conditions on it. But when the hearing came, I put more conditions on operating conditions. And according to what I've read since then, the owner, um, J and J, oil waste facility. Uh, had to close it down, did not accept the permit because he said it would be too expensive to operate with all the conditions. Plus, I think he had a few financial problems at that time, but I'm not sure about that. So did you get any help from uh, the state back in those days? No, not really. There, there wasn't much help coming from anywhere. Um, the Oxnard City Council, I did not get help from them. The uh, uh, planning uh, department uh, director, uh, Gene Hosford, was concerned about the site and wanted it only open for a limited amount of time, as I recall. However, it really didn't have any strong opposition, except for myself. <laughs> I stood out alone on the issue, really. Well, uh, that's why you're here. Yeah. Uh, you were the leader in, uh, in getting the site to close. 
And um, there are residents over here that to this day are still concerned about uh, the activity that's going on here. Well, there is some activity going on. There is a developer that came in and bought the uh, property. I don't know, it's probably changed hands over the years, but uh, lots of conditions were placed on it to put homes here. I'm not sure that's ever been a very good idea, but however, they did take out a lot of waste. Uh, I don't know how much or whether they got it all out. I don't know that for sure. They may have, uh, and that needs to be determined. But I think the LA Water Quality, Regional Water Quality Control Board uh, issued uh, a comment in 1985, long after J&J &J gave up the permit, that it had to be closed properly. And J&J uh, &J fought that in court, and uh, he lost that one. The LA Regional Water won that fight. However, along come some developers, and perhaps that uh, ease the closing requirements. John, there's a sign here at the site that uh, uh, has a phone number and uh, informs people that if they uh, have a problem with dust or smells that they can call this number. And my understanding is uh, back in, uh, in the time you were working with the site that there were complaints about smells uh, uh, that were similar to hy hydrogen sulfide that came from the site. There were complaints about odors coming from the site. Um, also, there was, there was some speculation that people later suffered from cancer. However, I, I don't know anything about that or whether or not that's true uh, from the site being here. However, in, in, in anyone's estimation, it was an operation that should, that should never have existed here. Uh, the, the, the day it was put in here in 54, people didn't have the concern they had later on about environmental issues, and um, today it would be, uh, it would never even pass any kind of mark to become a site again. So it shows how much things have changed since 1954, people's attitude and knowledge of things. People had no knowledge of dumping uh, chemicals here at, and what impact it would have in those days. During the uh, permitting process for the uh, residential development, there was some discussion that aside from the oil waste that was dumped here, that there may have been uh, parties bringing in uh, 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 other items that uh, deposited PCBs and PBBs. Uh, was there any knowledge of that back uh, in the 70s? Certainly. Uh there was speculation, and I, I think it had a heck of a lot of truth to it, because in those days, people didn't particularly care about where they dumped things. There were probably chemicals and, and toxic materials dumped in the site, that's for sure. The county planning staff found a lot of metals in the, in the site, and they're testing of it. So it, uh, it, it certainly invited anyone and everyone to dump there. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. John, do you know of any uh, fines that were issued for illegal dumping on the site? I don't think there were any fines. In fact, in those uh, days, we're talking about 30, some 40, 50 years ago, uh, regulations were not enforced very well. And the conditional use permit came about, you know, in the last 35 years, and they weren't really enforced very well in those days. So I don't think any fines were levied. I know there was some discussion uh, more recently that uh, old electrical transformers may have been dumped here. Was there uh, any knowledge of that back in your time? There was uh, knowledge of it, however, it's been so long ago I can't remember the particulars. We're talking about 30, in my involvement, 30 some years ago. More recently there's also been discussion that uh, some of the chemicals that were deposited on this site were uh, very close to reaching uh, a local aquifer here, and that was one of the incentives for uh, allowing uh, the uh, work to, uh, to go forward here. Uh, was there any discussion about um, local aquifers uh, years ago? Uh, certainly there was, but there wasn't a knowledge about aquifers that came about a little bit later. As you know, I led the battle against the uh, seawater intrusion in the Oxnard Aquifer. The Oxnard Aquifer is about 200 feet below us here, 
uh, and it's a walk for their walk for, for use by agriculture and and urban areas, and so it certainly was threatened. Well, during the time you were on the board, uh, it was well known that you were the uh, authority on uh, water issues in Ventura County. So, um, your input into this must have been important. Well, uh, I think you're giving me a lot of credit, which I'll accept, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think people listen to it. I, th I think you're right. So, John, it appears that uh, the main reason the site eventually was shut down was due to uh, community concerns, health concerns, and, uh, and also complaints about uh, odors emanating from the site. Uh, does that uh, coincide with your knowledge? Certainly there was that. There wasn't... Uh in my recollection, however, there was that for sure. There's no taking away from that. However, it wasn't really that strong, um, except from a few people, and I mentioned the name of one of them, and he was absolutely ballistic about this whole thing. When you look over here and you see trucks dumping what could be any kind of material, toxic material, it certainly alarmed people. Uh, do you think the uh, lack of uh, response was due to the era we're talking about? Were people less inclined to uh, complain about these things? I, I think that has a lot to do with it. I think you're absolutely right. In those days, uh, this was more of an agricultural area than it is today. And, uh, it, and people simply didn't pay much attention to where they dump things and so forth. That, that's all of us. Every one of us is really kind of guilty of that. Well, the location here is, is uh, not isolated as a dump site. Uh, we're close to Oxnard Shores, which was also a dump site. Uh, there's uh, uh, the, the Halico Industrial Site, uh, kind of on the other side of town that's uh, also down by uh, wetlands. Uh, that was uh, apparently a dump, a dump site before it was Halico. Yeah. So it appears that uh, 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 sand dunes and wetlands were, were not really valued in those days. That's correct. I would agree with that. Plus, Oxnard uh, seemed to be a dumping ground for the entire county, too. There are a lot of uh, dumps here. We'll call them dumps now. They're called landfills sanitary landfills today, but there really were dumps. Everything went into them, starting from here and going up into uh, <clears throat> where the uh, gol Oxnard Golf Course is today. That was all a dump at one time. John, this site is uh, now being called North Shore. It's a uh, residential development. And uh, even though it was a toxic waste site, yes. it was annexed into the city of Oxnard. Uh, so that uh, this project could be approved. And uh, doesn't that seem unusual that a city would uh, annex a toxic waste site um, to uh, uh, deal with those kind of problems? It, it does seem uh, very unusual. Of course, they did it some time ago. However, uh, today for a, a purchaser of a home, here, I, I would be very reluctant to buy a home on this site, even though there would have been and there has been a good effort to clean out the dirty stuff. Well, aside from uh, the toxics, uh, you're aware that there, uh, there is a plant on the site, Ventura Mark Milk Vetch, which was thought to be extinct, and it's... Uh, uh, it was found here, and this is this is really the main location that yes, the plant I resides in. I remember in. that, and I think I used that in one of my arguments. I made a presentation at the board that probably lasted an hour. I was pretty well prepared on the issue. And and uh, what did you say to the board? I asked the board to shut it down. The board was uh, reluctant to do so, as it is to shut any landfill down. It's always, you know, controversial, at least today it is. But uh, putting conditions on certainly made it uh, financially not a, a good, good investment. John Flynn, you were a supervisor how many years? 32 years. 32 years. I think that's the record in Ventura, isn't it? Tied for the record. The other 32-year uh, person was 
his last name was Clark. He was from Ojai. Well, John, uh, you've been recognized as a coastal hero for your time uh, on the Coastal Commission, uh, one of the state's uh, leading experts on uh, water and water quality, and uh, you served 32 years on the Board of Supervisors. Many of us want to thank you for your service, which has been outstanding. Uh, everyone knows that you're a great county supervisor, and uh, you had an effect on shutting this place down before it got much worse. So we all thank you. Thank you very much for the interview, and thanks for your nice comments. Well, you just heard uh, one of the uh, leading experts on this site and uh, the toxics that were deposited here questioning the wisdom of uh, purchasing a home on this location. And thanks to John Flynn for uh, speaking to us. For the Surf and River Report, I'm Al Sanders here at the corner of Fifth and Harbor, one time site of the JNJ Toxic Oil Dump Site, and now a residential development project called North Shore. We're here at Fifton Harbor, which is close to the site of a proposed peaker plant uh, to be built by Southern California Edison, adjacent to the power plant we see over my shoulder. We're very fortunate to have today an expert on, uh, on this issue, Mike DeMartino, also a local resident. Hi, Al. How are you doing this afternoon? Doing good. Uh, you've been involved in uh, trying to stop this peaker plant for uh, several years now. Um, why did you uh, become involved in this issue? Well, the, it was about uh, 2005, 2006 when uh, this, this plant was initially proposed. And it was around the time that uh, they were also uh, trying to put uh, an LNG uh, facility off the coast. And uh, the environmental movement was booming at the time. Uh, there was a uh, coalition of individuals from uh, all different stripes, you know, from the you know, uh, conservative, liberal, uh, greens, and uh, different kinds of uh, groups in town and in the county. Uh, we had uh, uh, people as far away as Malibu and Santa Barbara involved in, in that project. And, it, and in that process, we were also involved in uh, preventing this uh, peaker plant. And what we found at the time was that uh, the peaker plant was basically approved by the city before anybody really had any chance to talk about it. It was, uh, uh, there was not an environmental impact report done on it or anything. And uh, people were just left to uh, play catch up uh, you know, from that point. Mike. Uh, Oxnard City planners really uh, gave uh, Southern California Edison uh, a green light, but eventually this went before the city council, and you did have some success. Yes, we did, and we were able to get the city council to uh, to deny the permitting for for the project here, which was a, a great thing for the community. Uh, that was uh, the good news, but it was followed shortly with uh, bad news at the uh, California Coastal Commission, I'm told. Right. Uh, the C California Coastal Commission, which at the time, uh, many of the members were uh, appointed by uh, our past governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, were uh, individuals that seemed to think that uh, business interests were more important than the community interests. So. Uh, I was actually out at the site one day when the, the whole Coastal Commission came out on a bus and went over to the site, and I was standing there listening to uh, uh, Peter Douglas ask questions like, well, how tall is the, is the uh, smokestack going to be? And you know, they were talking, well, it would be like two buses stacked up on each other standing up straight. But what they didn't talk about was, well, how much more smoke is going to be going up in the air from the top of that? How, so how high does the smoke go? So they were even, even considering what the, the environmental impact was. They, just wanted to, they were just worried about the cosmetics of it. And, and, and a lot of what they were talking about, and if you looked at their proposal, was a lot of green, greens around it to hide it. But it's still a power plant that uses uh, old technology 
It's, it's fossil fuels going into our atmosphere. And it's not doing anything to address the problems we have with climate change. Mike, uh, right behind us is uh, uh, another electrical generating facility. It's called the Mandalay Power Plant. And uh, there's another plant here in the city of Oxnard, the uh, Ormond Generating Station. So this would be the third electrical producing facility in the city of Oxnard. How do local residents feel about having all these uh, um, electrical generating stations close to them? Well, we want them gone. Uh, I mean, the, the, plants that, the, the plants that are here right now were built in the 1950s. They, they were placed here because at the time they needed cooling from the ocean, but that technology is ancient. We, you know, we need to go to newer uh, types of uh, power resources. So we're trying to get rid of those two power plants, and now here comes Edison wanting to stick a peaker plant in an area where we're trying to get rid of a plant. So that's how the, the, the uh, residents here feel. We don't want these plants here. And in addition, there's a, a peaker plant or a, a, actually it runs full time over at Procter & Gamble. So we have actually four power plants, in the, would have four power plants that I know of running in the area. Isn't it true, Mike, that uh, there are uh, alternatives including uh, a, uh, a battery uh, powered uh, plant, uh, solar uh, powered uh, elect electricity and, and other alter alternatives that could take the place of this gas-fired plant? Right, there's, uh, matter of fact, the, the, the California Energy Commission had, rec had recommended, uh, this is in the last couple of years, that the, the best solution for a peaker plant would be a solar peaker plant, especially since you could put them in the areas where the, where the most use was going on, so, say on the east side of our county in Simi Valley, where it's very, very hot in the, in the summertime, in the hundreds of degrees, um, you know, where they're using all that electricity, they, would, they could have uh, peaker plants right there if they put up solar panels. Mike, how would that solar power uh, proposal work? Well, the, the solar power uh, you know, during the day is going to provide you know, s s energy for you all the time. But as in addition to that, there are uh, large facilities that are built in like containers, like you see on a container ship, that are, are loaded with batteries. And that, and that can hold the charge. So when you need startup power from nothing, black start is what they term it, you've got the battery backup to do that. So you're covered. You don't have to uh, have a uh, gas-fired power plant kick in and uh, pollute the air. The original uh, order to build peaker plants came in 2006. There was a heat wave. People inland uh, were all turning their air conditioners on at the same time which I understand was the incentive for uh, building peaker plants. Uh, isn't it true, though, that uh, four of the five uh, proposed plants have already been built? Uh, yes, they have, and we've, you know, the problem with it not having enough peak power has been solved. Uh, we don't really need this plant out here. Um, on all these years, we haven't had any blackouts out here in, in the meantime, there's other, you know, and. As a matter of fact, this power plant behind us has a peaker plant on it. It may not be operational right now, but if, if this plant were to continue, they could you know, um, renovate the one that's here already. But, uh, you know, but in the long run, the best thing for us is to get, get this plant behind us out of here and not allow Edison to come in and, and uh, put a placeholder in here uh, by, and keep this uh, property behind us uh, uh, zoned the way it is. We can, you know, th this is very re valuable real estate here, um, and uh, it's adjacent to a huge community uh, of, of people living along the beach in multi-million dollar homes, and uh, 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 mixed neighborhoods. And, and there's there's uh, elementary schools very nearby here. You know, the the pollution from this uh, plant, these plants, uh, is not uh, warranted, and. Uh, also, there's a, an airport not by, not far from here, where the, the jets fly right over this area where we're standing right now, and uh, you know there's potential for for uh, damage from that. Mike, there are two generating facilities here in Ventura County, and we've been talking about a new peaker plant. But my understanding is the existing plants 
are more or less operated as peak power plants. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, they, they fill in uh, when we need uh, power in the area. And uh, the reason they're just doing it intermittently is because they have to pay extra because of the amount of pollution that they generate. So the only time they run the plants is when they can make extra money in, in, a, in a peak time. So this part of Ventura County isn't really dependent on power from these plants at all? No, it's not. I mean, we've got five, 500,000 volt you know, high power lines running down this way. So we're actually tied into the, to the main grid that runs down the middle of the uh, 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 state. You mentioned uh, pollution before. My understanding is this part of Ventura County is a non-attainment area as far as air quality, meaning that uh, we're polluting more than we're allowed to pollute. And uh, you have these uh, two generating facilities uh, adding to that. Why, uh, why do people put up with that? Well, people don't want to put up with it. And, and I can tell you, as a cancer survivor, I uh, recently had, uh, in the last year, I had surgery for, for lung cancer. Um, and, you know, I don't want to be around these polluting sources. Um, as it is, uh, we have uh, a major freeway running through here. We have agriculture. We have the two power plants. And not only that, one of the major sources of pollution coming into our county is from the container ships that run through the uh, channel out here. They use bunker fuel, which is the filthiest, dirtiest fuel you can use. And if you were to be, uh, ride behind one of these uh, tankers out there, you see all this brown sulfur coming off of these ships. And that drifts into our community here. And so it's one of the largest sources of pollution in Ventura County. So we are bombarded as, you think, well, we're out by the ocean, it's, it, it's better here. But we're bombarded by uh, industrial uh, pollution. And depending on, you know, which way the wind's blowing, you know, we're always going to be affected by this pollution. Uh, they're, they're planning on building another uh, elementary school over uh, about a m another three quarters of a mile from here. Um, there's a, and then the prevailing winds blow all this pollution right up towards Camarillo, which is trapped on two sides by the mountain, so it's going to hold in this pollution. So you're a father? I'm a father. I have two daughters. And uh, we've lived in the community here since uh, 1994. Mike, thank you very much for uh, appearing on camera with us today. Thanks, Al. Appreciate it. With all we learned today about peaker power, solar energy, and batteries, perhaps a day will come when we will not have the Mandalay power plant and instead uh, rely on solar energies and batteries. For the Surf and River Report, I'm Al Sanders in front of the Mandalay Generating Station.